So this is going to be the most basic of videos. <laughs> it is literally like <clears throat> a random, just a quickie video that I wanted to put together because no one is home right now, literally, and probably won't be home for at least another 10, 15 minutes. So because of that, I'm going to actually show you guys um, my little tarot collection here. Little. I have a shitload of cards. Um, I'm going to do a deck review <clears throat> of the ethereal visions tarot so without further ado let me flip the card over i mean the card flip the card as you can see i'm in tarot mode <laughs> let me flip the camera over so that it's facing my gorgeous tiny little room that my husband and i live in for now okay <clears throat> so i'll just hold the camera i have it on a tripod but <laughs> okay so um the ethereal visions ethereal visions i'm so bad with like pronouncing my words i'm so one of those tomato tomato people um ethereal visions illuminated tarot deck by matt hughes this deck you guys first off let me just say it's only 21 dollars on amazon it's now being mass produced <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it is now being mass produced. I heard that it, it was an indie deck. Um, I honestly didn't hear about this deck when it was an indie deck. Indie deck, for those of you who are newbies, means um, independently created. So, for example, like The Wild Unknown was independently created. Now it's being mass produced and you can buy it at Barnes & Noble, um, Target, Walmart, you know, on their websites and stuff. So, <clears throat> and on Amazon. Um, but an independent owner, an indie deck, is a deck that was originally created by the artist and then it's sold usually independently through their website. So you can't buy it, you know, on, on mass-produced sites like Amazon or Barnes & Noble. But after a while, when an artist um, is able to or wants to, chooses to mass produce their deck, whether it's, you know, super popular or, um, you know, it's it's just gaining a lot of exposure, um, then they will opt for that. So I guess that's what happened with this one. I don't know. All I know is <clears throat> I started seeing pictures of this deck on Instagram and I was like, what is this deck? And I, I, feel, I feel like I've, it's been around for a while, <laughs> but I really just heard about it. So, um... The, the box is beautiful. It looks like the, um, like it has a Terra Mucha vibe. I don't know if you guys are aware of that deck. But it has gold foil along the box. And as you can see on in the back, I really like gold foils, metallics, all of that for summer decks. So that's why I think I'm so vibing with this one. And it's a nice sturdy box. It comes with a little white book. So I don't know if I can open this with one hand. Let me put my, <clears throat> let me put my tripod down. <laughs> this is a lot harder than what I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> okay, so when you open the box, um, it has, it's by US Games. It has, um, it's like a minty color. And this is the booklet that it comes with. I've never opened it. I don't need to. Um, I'm pretty well versed with the tarot now and the cards actually follow <clears throat> the Rider weight. So the guidebook is basically made up of just some um, short little key keywords. Nothing spectacular. So that is the box. Um, put that right there so you guys can see it. And then the cards... These are the backs of the card. So this is the deck. It's rather chunky, as you could tell. Um, oh, let me see if I can get. Do I have a basic? Ah, let's let's look. <laughs> Do I have a random right away anywhere around here? I can't remember like what deck I put my right away in. What bag? Oh. Bam, there we go. <clears throat> okay, so let's put it against it because I haven't seen it against a standard Rider Waite. And since everybody knows what a Rider Waite is, um, 
Here's the Rider weight. Here is the Ethereal Visions. So as you can see, it's about the same, but it is a little bit bigger. Yeah. Oh yeah, much bigger. So there you go. <laughs> so it is a little bit larger than the standard tarot deck. Um, the, the card backs are like greens, blues, and some purples. The borders are a creamy color, okay? So it's like an off-white, like a bone color or a creamy, creamy color. Um, they're not white. And then the cards themselves all have this gorgeous gold foil you can see it shimmer. I have a, the ceiling fan on, so it's kind of, yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so they all have like this like gold foil border and some of the cards themselves will have extra highlights in them. So here's the moon. Each card has the, the, um, the title of it and the number. It's a numeral, Roman numerals. Um, here's the high priestess. She has some foil in her. The Eight of Cups. So as you can see, the the these are the major arcanas. The minor arcanas also have the number and the the suit, and they also have a gold foil border. And the imagery is really simple, you guys. It's muted colors, but it follows the Rider weight, as you could tell. So it's so nice. Um, you don't need a guidebook if you know, if you are pretty well versed with the tarot, you won't need the guidebook. And, um, I love that it follows Rider Waite because it's just so easy to just read. <laughs> you don't need the guidebook. The only thing I don't like about this deck, this is the death card. Um, the only thing I don't like about the deck is there is no diversity. So there's just a bunch of white individuals men and women, but there's no diversity. So that's the only downfall. You would think by now that that shouldn't be an issue with a lot of the decks that are coming out these days, but I guess apparently, um, you know, people don't understand that. They don't, that's just not something that they see as a necessary thing for their deck. I don't know, but I wish there was a diversity. It just, it would have made this deck so much more. It would have made this deck a 10. <laughs> so I rate it. Um, I definitely rate this deck about an 8. I really like it. Um, the other thing I really like is the cardstock. So some people are very picky with cardstock. I'm not. I like thin, thin, thin cardstock. But this cardstock is, it's easy to bend. But it's much thicker um, than, you know... It's kind of, it's, it's thicker than the traditional Rider weight decks. Um, it just feels more like cardboard. I don't know how else to explain it, but it's not super thick. It bends easily when you're shuffling, but this is a deck where, like with the Rider weight, if you were to get little, um, like, um, it would bend or creases. It doesn't, it, I mean, it shows, obviously, every card if you have a crease. I don't think I have any. But if it creases, you know, this on this deck, it, you'll be able to tell much more because of that cardboard cardstock. So um, I'm very rough with my decks when I'm shuffling. I don't have a fear of <laughs> wearing them in. So um, I don't care. But some people who are very picky with their decks and really careful with them, um, you may not like the cardstock because you will you will definitely see the damage. Um, what else? Um, it shuffles like a dream. Let's see if I could show that off. Let's see if I could balance my, <laughs> my tripod here. Oh. Sorry, guys. I'm, like, on the bed. So you could totally do a bridge shuffle. It shuffles really easily. If you have um, small hands, you know, you could shuffle the card sideways because they are just a little bit larger than the Rider weight. Um, thicker card stock, so the card, the deck does feel chunkier. 
The other thing about this deck, there's a couple extra cards. Um, let me see if I can find them. <laughs> there's a couple extra cards and the well. Here's one of them. There's two extra cards. So this is the well. This one is number 22. So you usually have the world, which is, she was over here somewhere. The world, she's number 21. So you have the well, which I guess if you intuitively interpret this card, I would say it would be like, put, you know, setting wishes, the client putting wishes out there, um, setting their intentions for their dreams, setting goals, that kind of thing. Um, and then the other extra card... Let's see. Oh, look at this tower card. Isn't that cool? The fan, I'm telling you, like I have a ceiling fan. <laughs> it's just like making the gold really stand out. Um, what is this? Four, uh, oh, here. No, no, no. What is that? Four of wands. Some, sometimes the, um, the text is hard to read. Sometimes. Look at this queen of cups. Like a mermaid. Where is that extra card? The Wheel of Fortune is pretty crazy. <laughs> Well, <clears throat> it's in there somewhere. Um, but you have like the wish. I wish I could just find it. I'm sorry, you guys. I should have had this been more prepared. But like I said, this was totally spur of the moment. String. Oh, here it is. The Arise. This is number 23. So... You know, the arise could be like, you know, seeing your, the outcome or the finish line. Was this arise? No, this is the artist. I'm sorry. The artist. See, I'm telling you. A-R-I-S-E. That's, I thought this was an E. The text is a little bit hard to read. <laughs> Plus, I'm looking at it through my camera. Um... But yeah, the cards are beautiful. I totally give this deck an eight. I really, really, really enjoy it. It's been the, the one that I've been going to for client readings lately. Um, like I said, it's really good for summer season, but I mean, you can use this at any time. Um, so definitely a really great deck. It's simple. The artwork is beautiful. The colors are muted. The deck, the card stock is kind of thick, but it shuffles easily. Um, the only thing is if you are looking for diversity in your decks, um, this one doesn't have that, so if that is an issue for you, you may not like this. But if it isn't, then there you go. The Ethereal Visions Tarot. And I picked my copy up at Amazon for $21, so there you go, you guys. I hope you enjoy. Thank you guys for watching, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye, my loves.